All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and now welcome. Welcome to a game between Soin and Focus. This game taking place here on Autumn Leaves. Um, this is, I believe, from DreamHack Summer Asia. Um, for all of you guys who are keeping track of everything, the uh, first thing to note is that the timing um, I, was the timing a little bit different. You know, uh, timing was a little bit different, not too different though. It looked when the game was paused in the, in the opening seconds that Focus had placed down his Altar of Storms and his Burrow slightly um, faster as Soin is now going into a barracks and we are going to be going into a barracks as well. It looks like we will be going into, I, guess, I believe, Blade Master play. Farseer play normally has Headhunters first as of late, but then again, uh, well, Orc versus Orc could be different. And I, and as much as I get to cast these replays, I it's not as good as just studying all the replays to just try and be, uh, well, an absolute guru and buff. All right, there is going to be a war mail now. So it is going to be Farseer, but with a starting grunt first, perhaps. Meanwhile, we are looking at a Blade Master, and we will be going into grunts as well. We don't see a war mail just quite yet. So Blade Master against Farseer here on Autumn Leaves, a map that generally has a lot of aggression. Expansion possibilities to the left, um, well, um, either to the east or west of you or directly to the north or south of you and both however do expand towards your opponent and both are fairly difficult to try and defend sometimes the east west ones perhaps the easiest ones to try and defend as it is farther away from your opponent but there are so many walking paths into each of these locations that well um, it's sometimes difficult to figure out when your opponent is going to be getting in there perhaps the best choke point is right here all right farseer and blade master is already out onto the battlefield two far uh, two wolves and a lone grunt gonna go ahead and try and engage against that forest troll berserker there meanwhile blade master while taking quite a bit of damage and well the creeping game is now under play Text to tier 2 should be followed up here in just a moment. We're looking at another orc burrow training up and a great use of that extra um, um, extra one supply from the great hall. Instead of getting for an extra peon, getting up to 21 supply to be able to train up more headhunters. Interesting call there. Meanwhile, on the bottom left, the tech to tier 2 has already begun. So... It looks as though Focus is going to have a bit more of an advantage early on in terms of a hero army size, which should translate to faster creeping speed. He does not, however, have the um, the Voodoo Lounge as of yet, so any damage that he takes is going to stick a while, stick around a little while longer. These the these decisions, these tensions in the game, you sacrifice one thing for the other, is what makes real-time strategy games interesting. In order to take an advantage somewhere, well, you generally have to cut back somewhere else. And it looks as though Focus is going to not have an easy as of easy of a time healing, even though he does have additional headhunters out, and he's really hoping that these spirit wolves absorb the majority of the damage. Coming back through, Blade Master sitting at level 2 has double circlets of nobility and, well, now healing back up already. Meanwhile, coming back across here, Farseer picks up a potion of greater healing. That will be a very nice pickup if there is a bit of focus fire onto his own unit. Blade Master now looking to finish off this Ogre of Magi. Ogre of Magi should get taken down pretty quickly. That plus 4 damage coupled with. Um, coupled with that critical strike should make short work of it as Focus gets a little bit of bonus experience there. Fo or excuse me, not Focus, uh, Sobin getting a little bit of bonus experience there. Focus, on the other hand, opting to take this opportunity to continue to clear out creep camps and get to level 3. Semi my brother is semi-pro LOL player and he says China is now dominating South Korea, but I guess W3 is too much of a niche game to China to, to grow. Well, China hasn't. Been, yeah, no. Um, Warcraft three is Warcraft three is definitely a China, uh, a China and South Korea dominant. Well, I, I would almost say um, Eurasia dominated game. Um, Americas just don't really appreciate the complexity of of Warcraft three, um, and. Well, it, it's it's one of those things where, uh, unless you grew up playing the game, um, being trying to be taught it 
is is going to be a little bit difficult. We are looking at headhunters now putting pressure down onto the orc burrows. We don't see a war mail, and that's the reason why the headhunters could actually put pressure onto the orc burrows since there is no fortified defenses. Meanwhile, a bit of damage now adding up. Oh, it looks as though a, a little bit of experience as the Blade Master now going to be coming across with plus that. six to every single stat. That Blade Master hits harder, is more difficult to take down, and has more mana for Windwalk. One headhunter getting lost already. Level 3 versus level 3. A Farseer going to come back around, perhaps try and put more pressure. He's going to be able to push on through. There we go. Getting some damage onto those wolves once more. All right, those critical strikes going to really start to add up as the Farseer, well, trying to get away, but ends up getting hexed by the Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter already there, and it looks as though Sowin taking a bit of an advantage already with that earlier second hero and should be able to, well, continue to add up that damage. Farseer trying to delay the Spirit Lodge doesn't want to go up against those shamans who will be purging down the Spirit Wolves and, and well, purging down the heroes to try and deny any sort of escapes. Meanwhile, Blade Master finding himself fighting in a battle against a bunch of headhunters. This might be a little bit of a difficult battle. Blade Master decides to quickly retreat as it is a Shadow Hunter second instead of a Torin Chieftain. Focus open, uh, following up with the Shadow Hunter does surprise me a little bit. Not what I was expecting at all. Voodoo Lounge is already down as the Blade Master are going to find. Well, are we going to see a hex there? No, no hex in time. Blade Master with a 104 critical strike finishing off that headhunter with a bit of overkill. Farsi are going to come around, perhaps try and disrupt. No auto attack there to um, do anything as we see Dust of Appearance beautifully applied to the Blade Master, but so in using line of sight on the forest in order to get away. All right. Farseer, where is it going to try and go next? Blade Master, the Dust of Appearance, if he tries to uh, well, run anywhere that his opponent focus has sight, he will be revealed. Dust of Appearance is finally gone. Shadow Hunter, going to finish off the Sasquatch here. Focus, well, Focus um, picking up some additional items. Where we'll see where all of this is going to be going. Level 3, level 2 by Sowin. Level 3, level 1 by Focus as we are not going into a tech to tier 3. All right, I am interested to see how these headhunters are going to fare without the Berserker upgrade and without a Torrent Chieftain to try and protect them. Um, Folk Solin, on the other hand, 39 supplied. There's the engagement here. And are we going to perhaps see a potential creep jack as the Blade Master is already trying to get into the back here, get some damage, perhaps take down some of these units. Units are already turning back around. I item one of the wind. Blade Master trying to take down. Yes, does get one headhunter down as the Blade Master now runs back off to the north. Little bit of damage still adding up, but you can see that Spirit Link doing its job, spreading out all of that damage. That headhunter should already have been taken down, taking over. Well, 200 points of damage, but now looks as though, well, he is going to be trying to back away again. All right, units continuing to battle it up here. Headhunters, all low, a lot of them low on hit points, and it looks as though, well, since Spirit Link being recast once more. Blade Master going to get a surround onto the Farseer. Firestar trying to back away the other side. Wand of the Wind, the pick or the dropped item from that creep camp earlier as the Blade Master almost gets surrounded. Down to 300 some odd hit points. Now going to go after that headhunter there, gets that last bit of damage. And that Blade Master, who looks like he didn't have that much mana, well, you got to remember, plus 9 intelligence, 430 or 390 mana on that Blade Master, still had enough to win walk away. All right. Blade Master going to continue to engage there. Shadow Hunter gets up to level 2. So 3 2 going up against 3 2. However, a quick ensnare on Sowin's Grunt, trying to well, force a battle here. Spirit Link being used as well to try and spread out that damage. And we're looking at two very different styles of Orc here in this matchup. There goes a Grunt getting taken down. Meanwhile, Raider, are we going to see an ensnare trying to go after some of those units? And it well, looks as though that's not going to be happening. Are we going to see an ensnare? No. Healing Wave trying to get in that damage. There's an ensnare on a Grunt. Blade Master, how we're going to finish off that Raider as the Grunt is, well, equivalent exchange right there all right shadow hunter continuing to back away are we going to see purge perhaps anything else the double kodo beast there's another quick hex going down and spirit link really making things difficult for that grunt or that blade master to try and focus down any real target healing salves perhaps are in order shadow hunter did pick up a robe of robe of magi for plus six in intelligence which will definitely help um, the number of well um, hexes and healing waves to be let off. Level 3, 
well hero levels are about exactly the same three and two a slight advantage for Sowen getting closer to level three on his shadow hunter but well so far this game can still go in either direction. Soen down to 38 supply compared to Focus's 49 though. As the Shadow Hunter ventures forth and realizes, wait, no, I don't want to be at the front line of this battle. Kodo Beast being brought over here, digesting a, um, a grunt. Now going to be backing up a little bit of damage here. Headhunters able to finish off that Voodoo Lounge as we're looking at more damage still getting added up again. Still 38 supply compared to 49. Soen. Sowen continuing to put in this pressure. Now going after the Orc Burrows. Still no War Mill as the Burrows could get taken down pretty easily. One, one Burrow already down. And that is going to, well, perhaps supply block Sowen, keeping him at 30 at 40 supply. Continuing this fight, continuing this battle. Another Grunt going to get taken down. Farseer seeing that level 4 here. Blade Master going to try to push back, take down another Grunt there as Focus is starting to take a bigger advantage. 47 to 34 as we're looking at a Voodoo Lounge and Focus setting up uh, some towers in the base of Sowen. So Focus continuing this pressure all across over here. Raiders could get taken down. Focus has to be careful if, if he does, loses too many Raiders. There's still a bit of home field advantage as Shamans are going to be popping out and reinforcements will be coming in more quickly. Kodo Beast 1 is not eating up any target here. A couple of purges can finish things off. Level 3 on the Shadow Hunter already um, on both sides as Peons are getting taken down. Blade Master trying to push back a little bit more and is so and going to be able to hold this, well, aggression. All right, Focus may be trying to do a bit of an all-in commitment here, or at least, or is he going to try to at least force an engagement? Voodoo Lounge is nearly done. Blade Master nearby, at least disrupt the healing as we look at a couple of heals going across here. Watchtower down to 111 hit points, going to get taken down. Here is another about to get taken down, and it, well, Solin not overreacting, coming and knowing that these guard towers actually take quite a bit of time to build and so in doing a great job there all right spear walker down at 70 70 60 hit points purge gets taken down once more as the blade master is just living up to his name and well living and dying by the sword gonna finish off a kodo beast no not unable to do that needs another critical strike blade master should be able to do it one more shot yes does get it taken out as well all right, two watchtowers there. 25 supply compared to 44. Sobin actually chasing his pursuer. He was backed into a corner, and he has nothing to do but lash out and take down units. And that exactly is what he's doing. That Blade Master is having a temper tantrum, and Focus's army is suffering for it. Blade Master once more going to try and engage here. Perhaps go after some of these units. Windwalk Strike going to go ahead and try and take down these Watchtowers once more, knowing the timing that it takes to build one of these towers. Able to finish off one Watchtower before it gets up, but now will be forced to retreat. Ensnare going down onto the Shadow Hunter, turning back around, trying to fight their way through. One Guard Tower is up here. A couple of Shaman who were extremely low on hit points, able to get back under the cover of the base here. Clarity Potion, Mantle of Intelligence, Healing Wave, Potion of Mana, picking them all back up, having a bit more mana to go. 47 supply compared to 23. Raiders are not are not engaging at this point. Not quite sure why. They should actually be in the front line compared to all of the Headhunters, as we should be looking at a couple of Ensnares. Peons not doing anything either. Perhaps um, Guard Towers a little bit fighting away as, or a little bit too far away to be fi fighting from as the Blade Master looking to retreat back once more. Blade Master does have an Orb of Lightning which will proc um, some additional damage and perhaps purge down a unit into its own position here. There's that purge forcing that fight there. Healing wave, keeping that Blade Master alive. Blade Master continuing to deal all of that plus damage once more using the potion of healing again and again. And well, an orc army that has a voodoo lounge is, well, I don't know, it's, it, it seems like that orc army just it keeps that the Blade Master alive for so long. You have an entire army trying to take down the Blade Master and he's finally going to get, no! Does not finally get taken down. I take it back down to four hit points. Able to win, walk away, and is now getting healed up. All right. This is going to give Focus a bit of time to focus down onto the barracks here. Healing Wave coming back through. Um, well, trying to save some of those peons. As th that aggression, no demolishers. And with only raiders trying to deal this siege damage. Could be a little bit difficult. We do have Solin um, sitting at Fortress. Hence the Orb of Lightning. But what other advantage is that going to really give him? Are the, do the shamans perhaps have bloodlust? No, no bloodlust there for the a crazier, fasting, faster attacking Blade Master. 
All right, Lightning Shield on the Blade Master. Blade Master adding up that damage. Healing Wave bouncing around. Shadow Hunter is now sitting at level four. Blade Master 153 critical strike, 162 critical strike, taking down some multiple units. Another potion of healing, a purge trying to take on another wolf right there. Kodo Beast trying to eat a shaman, not able to do so as the Blade Master retreats back once more. And well, we know he's going to be buying a potion of healing momentarily as the Shadow Hunter is trying to retreat back here. Repairs are still underway. Blade Master down to well. 244 hit points and blade master is going to be the mvp of this fight if Solon can at least hold off this attack here all right so far 23 supply compared to 50 home field advantage blade master um, because of that home field advantage constantly getting healed from that voodoo lounge and really still continuing to put that pressure on blade master getting up to level five level three critical strike could be in order yes and we should be seeing some big damage indeed there's a big healing wave right there as that raider 228 critical strike trying to finish off another two another 228 critical strike as that raider didn't know what hit him blade master of dishing out the damage still need to see more heals healing salve there you go once more gonna try and engage again as the shadow hunter gets picked in a beautiful play by sobin when walking past the opponent's shadow hunter and then allowing the blade master to become the, the wall to trap him inside that location a bit of overcommitment by focus and is this where everything starts to unravel blade master trying to take down focus here a uh, quite a bit of damage being pulled back blade master clarity potion well no i thought i saw a clarity potion i and a healing seven no clarity potion on the shadow hunter blade master still holding the door right there and well gonna be able to burst down that raider 224 critical strike blade master really dishing out that damage and well the blade master still hanging on to this battle as the repairs are still underway more peons being brought back over all you need is gold in order to buy things from the voodoo lounge you don't need any lumber hence well there's hardly any workers down across here only seven workers left not really training any additional peons as we're looking at the kodo beast well and giving that damage bonus to all of these units in the back blade master really hoping to hold on to this fight somehow um, are we going to be looking what are we going to be looking at blade master going after finds a purge onto some of those units trying to take them down blade master attacking very quickly 212 critical strike damage adding up but unable to finish off any of those units lightning shield potion of healing used as we're looking at the headhunters really taking quite a bit of damage kodo beast tries to expose himself and finds himself in a bit of a situation a raccoon somehow surviving all of this onslaught here and we're looking at raiders now making their way forward all right blade master i thought that raccoon was a hex unit for a second all right repair is still underway kodo beast one raider blade master has been doing a great job bursting down and now going after the farseer farseer critical strike um, and critical critical strike followed by more damage and a wind walk strike 196 farseer also taken out any units lost at this point focus now needs to back away some crazy critical strikes and it almost feels like this is a 1.29 game instead of a 1.31 game that classic classic play style where the blade master just seems to live forever and uh, live forever and he just plans to die another day mr james bond here going after the kodo beast trying to push uh, put that pressure back uh, we don't see any we don't see any production buildings aside from this spirit lodge so the only thing that can be trained up are shaman at this point and stage in the game we do have mastery training though so mastery training does mean a bloodlust on that blade master faster attack speed on top of everything else as the blade master is currently getting healed up all right watchtowers are finally up solon fighting with well a voodoo lounge that continually gets restocked even though there are even though there are no fresh deliveries and well that blade master with items just finishing off so many units so quickly shaman now trying to back away here taking quite a bit of damage we're looking at the units trying to put forward here and what is this focus also doesn't have fortified armor that that's the reason why the watchtowers can get taken down pretty fast and the shaman can actually deal quite a bit of damage as well the, um, are we going to perhaps be looking at more lightning shield here? Yeah, there you are. There's a distant, there's a distant chant there. Blade Master, 200 critical strike, going to finish off another raider as the as snares are going down. But the Blade Master is hungry for more blood. 232 critical strike. Uh, Blade Master, potion of healing, healing wave, bouncing around, keeping the units alive. As the lightning shield may finish off another unit. Level six now on that Blade Master. Blade Master does have Blade Storm. Is to stay alive right there. Up to nope, has to use Wind Walk in order to to fight. 
And well, what is this? Wind walk while having lightning shield also doesn't affect your own friendly units, even though you can see them. Um, so I, I guess the, the benefits of wind walk, uh, in, invisibility and wind walk actually working together there in a tactical retreat scenario. All right, a little bit more damage coming back across. No purge coming across there as the blade master says, you know what? You don't have fortified armor either on any of this. Shadow Hunter gets up to level five, and, and what? Wait, what, yeah, level three healing wave now. Level three healing wave is going to be a, a game changer, as the Blade Master was difficult to uh, get damage to stick before, and now should end up becoming impossible as he's finishing off unit after unit. Twenty-five supply compared to forty-four. Blade Master still pushing in all of this pressure, going after all of these units here, and it looks like well. Focus is going to end up losing a Kota Beast. Farseer is now back out onto the battlefield. But is it too little, too late? Blade Master still fighting his way through. Maybe level 3 critical strike should have been picking up. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Level 3 Windwalk should have been picked up over level over Blade Bladestorm. But as the Blade Master has not had the opportunity to really engage with it just quite yet. Farseer, Shadow Hunter still putting in pressure. Raiders are getting in damage. There's a 70 wind walk strike followed by a purge. Shadow Hunter, um, well, healing wave keeping that Blade Master alive. There's another purge. Down goes the Raider as the 224 critical strike still adding away here. Focus is in a bit of trouble, and it looks as though Focus is going to do it. 39 supply compared to 25. He's been holding off this siege forever and a day. Now finally turning back around, going after some of these other units as well as the Blade Master. Well, currently in snare, just says, you know what? I'll just attack whatever's next to me instead. More damage still adding up here. Level 3 healing wave. Clarity potions on that Shadow Hunter, coupled with, well, a bunch of, well, potions of mana. Going to go ahead and um, use that potion of mana and, well, continue to put this pressure back once more. Blade Master going after another Headhunter. Going to take him down. Spirit Walker's trying to retreat back. It gets purged. It's going to get taken down. 224 critical strike. And so in. It looks like it will be able to finish this off. Blade Master, well, living and dying by the edge of a sword. Well, and the Blade Master's sword is definitely sharp today. 34 supply compared to 25. The hero level advantage is now the main difference um, compared to the supply. Level 6, level 5 compared to level 4, level 3. Um, that is a very big difference indeed as the Blade Master seems to be biding his time to well venture out again. All right. A bunch of headhunters here. Focus. If, if, if you're trying to win with brute force and it's not working, well, then you could have tried to use more brute force, but... It doesn't seem like it's going to work at all. Still, Blade Master continuing this battle here. Healing Wave staying alive. Blade Master with Bloodlust. Very fast attack speed continuing. And there is the GG by Focus. Sowin able to hold off the attack for a good 12 minutes. And, well, escaping with his Blade Master at, at four hit points in one instance to take the victory. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys were entertained. Stay tuned for more Warcraft 3.